Good morning, friends. Welcome to another exciting moment in God's presence. My name is Solomon Salio, and it's so, so beautiful to be back with you here again this Sunday to learn about God, to share of God's, to share of God's love, God's mercies, and then to know more about our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. It's been an awesome time. This September has been so, so awesome. I know you've enjoyed your holidays and then you're back at school and then you've made new friends, met new people. Yeah, you must have changed your classes and then you started a higher level of work because I'm very sure everybody got into new classes. But before we continue today, I'd like us to just take this time out to pray and commit today's engagement to God's hands. Let's clap our hands together and pray. In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, we thank you for a wonderful moment like this. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for our parents, our teachers, our school. Thank you for our friends, our family members. Thank you for always being there for us. In all that we do, you've always been faithful. We glorify your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And as we have our class today, this beautiful session in your presence, O oh Lord, Father, let your spirit guide us, let your spirit teach us, let your spirit empower us to know the best and to walk in your ways every day of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Wow. It's so, I'm so excited to be with you all today. Now, it's been a long, long time since, we had the, since I had this class with you all, and I can't just wait to share of God's love with you all. Now, this month, we've been running a series used by God. The series is used by God, and I'm very sure in our previous weeks, the other two weeks, we learned about the vessels of clay, and then gifts from above, from our monthly series used by God. Now, today's topic is going to be a continuation of what we've done earlier, and the topic is, today's topic is the body of Christ, and it's going to be a continuation from the previous series we've had, which I, which I had mentioned earlier, the vessels of clay, and then gifts from above, going through our monthly series used by God. Now, it's so beautiful that we, we all know um, how well our body functions, you know, our eyes are different from, the functions of our eyes are different from that of our ears, from, of our legs and hands and nostrils and all that. So are we in the body of Christ. We are all built differently. We are all built uniquely by God. God is a God of variety. He loves different things and different people. That was why he actually created us differently to worship him. And so we can, we, we are going to look at how we can all fit together into the body of Christ and then see how we can bring more people into salvation. But before we continue with all the talks, with all the discussions, we need to shake our bodies a bit and then praise and worship God and get jared up for the other side, the other remaining part of today's lesson. And so let's just stand up, you know, take a walk around and go worship God. Hi friends, how are you doing? All right, so I want you to have your dancing shoes ready this morning as you want to give God praise. Are you ready? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Come on now. Let me see you dance. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You are God. You are not just big. You are not just large. You are a great God. Let me hear you sing. You are God. You are God. You are not just bigger. You are not just larger. You are a great God. One more time. You are God. You are God. 
Let me hear you sing. Come on. You are not just big, oh. Hey. You are not just large, oh. You are a great God. Let's demonstrate. You are big, 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 big. You are big, 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 big. Let me hear you say. Large, large, large. You are great, 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 great. You are a great God. Yeah, you're doing it well. You are big, 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 big. You are big, big, big. You are big, 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 large. You are great, 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 great. You are a great God. One more time. You are big, 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 big. You are big, big. Come on out. Come on out. Yeah, large, 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 large. You are great, 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 great. Hey, you are a great God. Oh, yeah, say, come and see what the Lord has done for me. Come and say, He has taken away my sorrows, now I am free. I got my hallelujah, bro. I got my para, hallelujah, para, hey. Say, because of Jesus, every day in Ashakara they do. Double, double, heavenly blessings, Naima they receive. Ah, hey. Surely goodness and mercy is always to follow me. Say, I, God has given me victory. Come on now. I, He has given me victory. Say, I, God has given me victory. Come on. I, He has given me victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Let me see you dance. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah, hey, hey, hallelujah, hey. One more time, hallelujah, hey, hey hallelujah, hey, hey, hallelujah, hey. Let me see you dance, let me see you dance, let me see, hallelujah, hey. hey. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Mm, hallelujah, hey. Hallelujah, oh. Hallelujah. Come on now. It's the sound of victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Let me hear you say. Let the sound of rejoicing feel. Let me see you jump. Let me hear you shout. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hey. let me see you dance, it's the sound of victory, ooh, hallelujah, hey. mm, hallelujah, oh, let me hear you say, let the sound of rejoicing fill this house. Let me hear you shout! Woo! I'm very sure we've all danced, we've all praised God, we've all moved our bodies, yeah. And I'm very sure some of you brought in um, the new steps you learned in school into today's uh, praise and worship session. Now let's go back to the topic for today, which is the body of Christ. But before we continue, we're going to quickly look at our memory verse for today, and it's taken from 1 Corinthians 12 27, which says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. 1 Corinthians 12 27, I'm using the NIV version, and it says, You are the body of Christ, and we are all a part of it. I'll go through it again. You are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. Now, this memory verse helps us to understand the fact that we are all fitted into one family, into one body, and that is the body of Christ. You know, Christ came for the redemption of our sins. He came to save the whole world from the punishment that was already laid down. And then, we, we have been called into this great commission, into this great family 
by the death of Jesus. He paid for our sins and then we, we, we are all um, um, we are, we, we've, we've all been called to actually bring more people into this beautiful family. Imagine the whole world being saved and nobody is going to hell. And you know, when you get to heaven, the people you saved, the people you, the people you preach the gospel to are so, so happy that you, you ever came to minister to them. That would be so, so much joy in heaven. And remember, the Bible even says that for every um, sinner who comes back to God, and repent of his or her sins, that there is a party in heaven for that person. Imagine you causing a party in heaven. That would be so beautiful. But for the body of Christ to function properly, we need to understand that we are all different. We need to understand that we are a functional part of this family. Let's not look at the function or where we are actually working at, uh, um, in, in, in the body of Christ. Well, let's look at the usefulness of our services in the body of Christ. You know, some people have been called to be pastors, some have been called to be teachers, some have been called to be healers, some have been called to even clean the church, some have been called to teach um, children, some have been called to just sing on the altar, some have been called to usher people into church and make them comfortable. You know, different, different roles are all there for us to take part in in church. And we do, not, we do not have to see our own roles being more important than others or see others' roles being inferior or being superior to us. We are all functioning as a body. Imagine the eye telling the nose, hey, I'm more important than you because I can see. And then the nose gets angry and says, okay, since you can see, let's see how you breathe. Because yeah, it's true, the nose will breathe. And you see, it's so, so important that we understand the fact that every member, every member in God's house is equally important. Remember, God made us equally. God made us equally. And so we should learn to actually appreciate um, the usefulness and the importance of other people in the body of Christ. Now, we'll quickly go through our Bible text. So that we'll have a broader view of what we are teaching today. And our Bible text is taken from 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 27. I go through it again. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 27. Let's open our Bibles and let's quickly read along as I quickly go through it. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. And it says, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. It says, for as the body is one and has many members, and all the bodies of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now had God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where will be the body? But now are they many members, but yet one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble and necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, Upon this we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncommonly parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God had tempered the whole the body together, having given them more abundant honor to parts which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, 
all the members rejoice with it. Now, we are the body of Christ and members in particular. Now, we've looked at the Bible text for today from 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 27, and it has clearly explained to, her, to us how the body functions. Now, the eye is not, too, is not more important than the ear, neither is the ear more important than the nose and then the legs and the hands. If the whole body were to be an eye, where, how will the eye move from one place to another? It will definitely not be protected and then, um, you know, it can just be attacked at any time. If the whole body was, were, were to be um, the legs, how, would, how will the legs see where it's going to? Now, we, we, we clearly understand and see that every member, every part of the human body is so, so important. The stomach digesting the food is so important, so is the hand that actually puts the food into the mouth and then the mouth chews it and then sends the food down to the stomach. Now, it's so important we know that we do not need to underrate anybody around us or look um, others as inferior to us, especially in the body of Christ, especially in church. Sometimes we make the mistakes of always looking at those who clean the church as not being important, maybe because we don't see them always on the altar, either singing or praising God or preaching. Not at all. If the church is actually dirty, you would definitely not like to come to church again. But these people do a whole lot, keeping the church tidy, keeping the church clean, and then you have a wonderful, beautiful service in God's presence, and then you can come back Sunday after Sunday. Same with those security personnel who make sure that no harm, no harm comes to the church. And then you have the teachers, you have the ushers who make sure there is a proper arrangement of people in church to make church very well. And then you have the protocol members. It's, it's, it's all about different people having different um, responsibilities in church. And then you have the head pastor coordinating everybody and then preaching every Sunday. Now imagine you come to church on a Sunday and there you see your head pastor actually sweeping the ground because nobody was around to sweep it. It won't look nice. It won't look sound. It won't look um, um, beautiful. Yeah, because that's not, that's not even the way to show humility. It's even to show that people are not even ready to work. But thank God we, have, we now have a community of people who now who fully understand their responsibilities and their roles in church and then they make sure that the body of Christ functions effectively and, uh, uh, and, 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 and beautifully. Now we need to understand our role in church, we need to understand our role in the body of Christ and work with all our hearts to make sure that we are effective at what we do. Let us not take our jobs lightly, let us not take our jobs for granted let us not take our responsibilities in the body of Christ for granted because we are equally important than any other person we see in the body of Christ. And so in this Bible text, Paul is encouraging us to know that we are important. We are sure important. The same way the trees, the plants are all important for the existence of man, so are we all important for the existence of others. God would have just made Adam and Eve and let them, let them live a thousand and one years, a million years and all. But God knows that they will need people around them. And that is why we need to fellowship with each other all the time. If there's any strife, if there's any anger, any enmity, we need to kill that immediately to make sure that God's house and the body of Christ functions properly so that more people can see us as examples and then they can tap into this beautiful love, into this beautiful grace and favors that we all benefit from God on a daily basis. Now, God loves us so, so much and he wants us to be saved and also bring others to him. And that is why we need to show us, we need to be good examples in, in a very organized manner to others out there. Now, we've seen a whole lot of organizations using the church as a yardstick or as, um, as a template for 
for how they run their own organizations. They even call in different um, different um, pastors to take them on leadership trainings and the rest. That is how organized, that is how some churches, that is how some body of Christ have gone so far in make, making sure that everything works perfectly well on a daily basis in church. Now, it's not easy to, to manage a whole lot of people. It's not easy to make sure that um, people understand the principles, understand what they need to do, their responsibilities in church and as members, as co-worker um, um, in God's house. It's not easy, but we, we, make it, we make it easier when we know our roles and then we just do it. You also are important in God's house. Don't look at yourself as just being children in God's house. Yeah, if you come to church and the service is over, but maybe most of the time when you come to church, the chairs are already set and then the boards are already in place and then there's somebody attending to you, putting on the tags on your hands and then you just come to church. What about if church is over? The chairs are always there. You can help other teachers stack up the chairs and then just push them to the side so that when those who are to clean the classrooms come, they can just take the mop and the broom and just sweep it easily. That is how you become functional also in church you can also take up extra jobs of making sure that um when 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 you have more than a pen or a pencil you can you can share with others so that everybody can write in class at the same time you can also help your teachers once in a while maybe to get water for others in a very orderly manner or when you're going for your breaks in between class you do it in a very coordinated manner you don't need your teachers to scream or to shout at you all the time to be on a straight line so that you can go to the restroom and back you all have responsibilities you all have you all have roles to play and the 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 the, the more we know our, our responsibilities our roles in god's house the better and easier for us remember when most most of the people who came to visit solomon in his in his house even fell under the anointing of the organization in his house. That is to show you that if God's house is well kept, if God's house is well organized, people will want to know what, um, what's happening in there. And the more they know about, about um, um, how things are being put in order, the more they know about God. And guess what? Directly and indirectly, you've actually brought somebody into God's family. And I enjoy you all today to make sure you take practical steps to be functional members of God's family. And then you see how your life flourishes from one level to another. Even right there in your classroom, you can, you can decide to, to make things work in your classroom. Um, sometimes the teachers may not be able to do everything at the same time. But if you have an idea to share with your teacher, yeah, you can share with your teacher. If you, have, if you know there's something you can do to make the classroom work better, yeah, you can also do that and then see how people will get to respect you. It's not until you're given a position to do a particular thing that makes you a leader. No, 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 no. Wherever you are, you can lead by being responsible and by taking up tasks that, that you know are important within your environment. And before you know it, you are already leading people to Christ. Now, it's, it's been awesome and super, super awesome sharing these wonderful um, um, experiences with you, sharing this wonderful moment with you. I hope um, we all go out this week and be wonderful examples to others by being a wonderful member in God's body and also make, making sure that we, we do the needful, we do the things that are necessary, you know, the, we do the things that are pertinent in making sure that the body of Christ functions effectively well. Now, before we round up for today, let's quickly look at our memory verse for today from 1 Corinthians 12, 27, which says, Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. I go through it again. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. And then our Bible text is taken from 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 37, helping us understand the different functions, the different roles 
the different importance of every part of the human body. But before we finally go, there are some questions we need to use, we just need to ask so that we can quickly assess how far you've gone with the class. And so the first one is, how many different parts make up the human body? How many different parts make up the human body? Why is each part of the body important? Why is each part of the body important? What would happen if the whole body was an ear? What would happen if the whole body was an ear? How many different parts make up the church? How many different parts make up the church? Why is each part of the church important? Why is each part of the church important? What would happen if everyone in the church did the same thing? What would happen if everyone in the church did the same thing? And then the last one, if one part of the body suffers, how should the other parts feel? If one part of the body suffers, how should the other parts feel? And on these last questions, I'll just um, want to explain this. Now, sometimes we feel a whole lot of pains within our groin area, within our, um, on our lap, when we have certain injuries somewhere around our ankles. Now, that's to let you know that every part of the body is connected and sometimes when you when you get um, injured or when you when you have some yeah when you have some injuries any part of your body it is your brain that tells you you are fully injured and guess what if you have not actually sometimes we 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 get into some minor accidents that we do not even know that a part of our body has actually been injured until our eyes see, sees it, until our eyes see it, and then it gets transmitted to our brain, then we'll now start having the feeling that, oh, something bad has happened to me. That is how most times things happen in the body of Christ. When one person, when one part of the body suffers, every part of the body suffers at the same time. And that is why we need to keep that unity, we need to keep that bond, we need to keep that family spirit together, and it is only Jesus Christ that can help us do that and the Holy Spirit that can help us build that beautiful bond together. And so on these notes, we have successfully gone through the body of Christ and we just hope that we'll play our part in making sure that God's, God's love is shared all over the world and the name Jesus Christ reaches every heart. And you'll be blessed for being part of this great family. And on this note, I say thank you for being part of this discussion time. I say thank you for yeah, dedicating your time to learning again, learning about God again. And then let's make sure we put in our best to make sure that we're functional in God's house, to make sure that we do the right thing to take up responsibilities in the body of Christ and you see how God's love will be transmitted to other people and then Jesus will be heard all over the world. If you do your part, I do my part and every other person does his or her part, we see the world becoming a better place. And yeah, I still have the strong belief that we can all make everyone and enjoy that wonderful place that we've all heard about. Thank you so, so much. We'll see you next week Sunday.